Every man's heart one day beats its final beat. His lungs breathe their final breath. And if what that man did in his life makes the blood pulse through the body of others and makes them believe deeper in something larger than life, then his essence, his spirit, will be immortalized by the storytellers, by the loyal, by the memory of those who honor him and make the running that the man did live forever. This is Mark Bell from Super Training Dat TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. This message is brought to you by HowMuchYouBench.net, the Slingshot, and the only freaking strength magazine in the world, which is now in newsstands with Dana Lynn Bailey on the cover, ThePowerMagazine.com. Here I got my chubby little self warming up. You're going to see us uh, you know, doing some various things when we're warming up. Some guys are grabbing a hold of bands. Some guys are bench pressing a little differently than you might uh, might be used to seeing. You see I'm going at a very slow pace. Shoulders weren't feeling. There's Stan grabbing a band. Uh, shoulders weren't feeling amazing on this day, so I moved a little slower through my warm-ups um, <clears throat> in terms of how I was lifting the weight. Uh, but I made a mistake on this day, and I'm going to show that to you guys uh, as I progress. I, <clears throat> I ended up uh, jumping weight a little bit too high, ended up um, going from uh, 405 right to 505. And I should have took that tweener. You always want to take that tweener lift um, uh, in order to get you into the strength bubble. Uh, you want to take that lift that's in between uh, to stimulate the CNS, to stimulate your body, your mind, your spirit to get you ready for that big weight. Here I am sharing a pair of shoes with uh, Rhino. Uh, I got a bunch of these Reebok power shoes. He loves them, so I figured I'd give him a brand new spanking pair of them. And there he goes, lacing them up. Why not? We're the same same size. You see Rhino now uh, getting into the, some of the heavier weights. He's got 405 on there. Stan has successfully bench pressed uh, 606 in competition. Um... The guy's an absolute beast. He's done a 2,300-pound total. I believe his best squat is an 865-pound squat. Um, I think he did an 854-pound squat uh, without knee wraps. Um, uh, best deadlift of 837 pounds. The guy's an absolute legend um, and also uh, not only a high-level power lifter, uh, but also got his pro card in power lifting, or in bodybuilding, I should say. There is no pro card for powerlifting. How about that? There's Silent Mike banging out 315 like it ain't no thing, like he's getting paid to be there. Maybe he is getting paid to be there. Here goes Rhino with 495. As I mentioned earlier, the guy's bench press 606 pounds. Clearly he's lost a little strength, uh, he's lost some of that top end strength. Uh, but nowadays he's into being healthy. He wants to look good. He wants to be healthy. He's very lean. He's probably about 255 right now, 250, somewhere in that range. And uh, he's very happy with, uh, with the goals that he set out for himself. So here I go for 505. That's a, this is that big jump I was talking to you about. And uh, I wanted to do a triple on this day and only ended up with a double. So, you know, when you're, wor when you're doing your warm-ups, you want to make sure you take those tweener ones, even if you know you're good for uh, making a pretty big jump. Make your bigger jumps earlier in the day. Make your bigger jumps on the lighter weights where it makes more sense. Um, don't do it uh, as you're progressing to your heaviest lift for the day. Here goes Silent Mike going with uh, what looks to be about 335. You see Mike's got a pretty good setup there. We're concerned with arching the upper back, not so much the lower back. We always want to try to get the upper back tight. There goes Mike with three reps with 335. I believe that's a PR for him. That's got to be very close to a PR. Rhino wanted to kind of re-warm up, so here he goes with doing that. But it's really, really important that you warm up properly, and not only that you warm up properly, but when things are going good, when things are feeling right, that you stay in that strength bubble. You got to find that's a real key to, to powerlifting or strength training in general, or even bodybuilding. You got to find that bubble of pain. You got to find that spot in the workout uh, where things where you're like, you know what, man, that that just blew me out. When you kind of feel that, that is exactly where you need to be. As soon as you feel in powerlifting, when you feel a weight uh, shifts you in a way that you didn't want to be shifted, it makes you lift with form that you didn't want to necessarily have. That means you found the correct weight. Um, 
that 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 being with that being said, uh, you know, hopefully you're still actually completing some repetitions because that's the other main thing is that you're completing some repetitions. Here goes Rhino. The 505 ended up being a little too heavy for him on this day, especially after he tried to go back down and wait and did some repetitions. But uh, you know, it felt good to kick his ass on something. The guy's uh, the guy's an absolute machine. You can see there, strength is never a weakness. A little shrine to Rhino. Got him posing, doing some uh, doing some pictures with him in front of uh, in front of the sign. We don't have anybody else on the wall at Super Training. Uh, I got a quote from my brother, my brother Mad Dog Mike Bell, um, and uh, we also got uh, there's no photo of him. But we got Rhino, strength is never a weakness, and we got Rhino up there on the wall. Here we got uh, here we got Juan Lyha lining up on a 405 bench. Good strong press by him, especially how clean that was. That was paused and everything. A really good bench by Juan. Juan's a uh, geared lifter. He wears a multi-ply shirt. He's been chasing after a 705 bench for a long time. I think his best is 693 or 699. And he hit. You can see Jim McD. Jim McD is usually behind the scenes. It's rare that he actually gets in front of the camera. But in order to be a good bench presser, you got to bench press, and that's exactly what Silent Mike is doing here. Silent Mike is working very, very hard uh, towards bench pressing uh, 365, 375. Uh, he's start, try, starting to get into that range, and a lot of our other guys that are benching in the fours and starting to close in on the 500-pound mark, um, they are also uh, bench pressing and bench pressing and bench pressing some more. You can see myself, I've shifted into wearing the slanger. The slingshot uh, makes the weights a little bit lighter at the bottom where the shoulder is the most compromised. And you still have to do a lot of the work as you start to press out of the bottom. You can see it stretching across the chest. I kind of refer to it as double muscle. But it's really important that in your, uh, in your efforts to getting more jacked and tan and getting stronger and things like that, that you find yourself a, a, a part of the workout that is demanding, that is physically and mentally demanding, and that you sit there in that moment and you train your ass off for a good 20, 30 minutes uh, within the confines of those sets and reps. So if, you, uh, if something feels right, fucking stick with it, man. Don't be so into your program. Everyone's always talking about their program, how they have to follow this specific program. And people that are brand new, it just completely boggles my mind. It completely boggles my mind that uh, people are so obsessed. People that are new are so obsessed with their program. And they want to talk about uh, you know, what they feel works for them. I'm like, how the fuck do you know what works for you? You've only been lifting... Um, for a year or two, you don't know what works for you until you've been lifting for a minimum, a minimum of at least a decade. You need to have 10 years under your belt. And on top of that, you might have to have a friend uh, overseeing your training who's been lifting for 10 years as well. You need 20 years of experience uh, floating around to make uh, judgment calls like that. I've heard people say, oh, I, I can't eat carbohydrates. They'll make me fat. Well, that's definitely... Um, it can definitely be an individual case, and I've seen cases where some people do struggle when they do eat carbohydrates, but most of the time when people say, make a statement like that, it's because they're eating ice cream as their form of carbohydrates or pizza as their form of carbohydrates. I've heard people say, oh, I, I have to squat three or four times a week, otherwise I can't make progress. Uh, you'll notice that the people that say that are usually not that strong. Those are usually not the guys that are squatting eight, 900 pounds. And the guys that are squatting 900 pounds, those are the guys that have it really figured out. Guys like Chad Wesley Smith, who um, oftentimes will squat two or three times a week. Uh, you'll notice that uh, he's very rarely doing a maximum. When have you ever seen Chad Wesley Smith struggle with a squat? I, I don't even think I've ever seen him struggle with a squat in a contest. Uh, maybe with the exception of the first uh, 905 squat that he did a few years back, it was like kind of hard, but not really. <laughs> um, so th the point is, is uh, don't be so entrenched in your, in your program. We had someone recently come to the gym, and they were all about their program. Look at Rhino just being a complete savage. I think those are 150s, it's just throwing them around on the incline bench, or what are those, 100s? I don't know what they are. He's cranking them out, though. It's easy for him. Um, 
We had somebody recently come to the gym, and uh, they did 385 for a double uh, in the squat, or 375 for a double in the squat. And uh, they just thought their training was down there. I said, no, you're at super training, dude. We're going to load the fucking weight up. We're going to get some music going. We're going to get a couple uh, spotters around you. We're going to get you fired up, and we're going to get you a PR. You're not walking out of here today without a PR. So we we ended up getting uh, getting a new guy up to uh, 405, 148-pound lifter. Ended up getting him up to a 405 squat, and he banged out easy, sure enough, you know, and he's he's uh, X amount of weeks into his training cycle, so he was kind of shocked that he was able to do it. Um, but when it's there, you got to go for it. You really do, and I, I'd say that as somebody who's been lifting uh, for 20-plus years. Now, now you got Rhino with the 150s, and just I don't even know what to say about that. It just looks too easy. Rhino's a complete savage. The guy might be retired, but he certainly ain't dead. He looks better than ever, and uh, he's still a freaking savage. And that is it from supertraining.tv.